But when you you have I, it's radiating off of you, you're, there's there's there was your father left your mom and left you. Yeah. So that would make anyone resentful. Sure. Have you had a conversation with your father and said, you know, I'm a grown up now and just mano a mano? How the fuck do you walk out on a one and a half year old kid? Yeah, I had it on, on my birthday a few years ago. But the, the thing was, is that. Probably not the best celebration. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ma. Hey, Pop. No, it was, it, it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't, what did he say? it wasn't a normal birthday. What did he say? We all have that one meltdown birthday. Yeah. You sh- what did your father say? Is that true? Everybody has a meltdown birthday? Absolutely. Yeah. What did your father say when you said, what the here hell? Was the, here, was the, here was the crux of it, is that I confronted him about his infidelity. Oh, I didn't know there was infidelity. Yeah. No, we talked about that. You said that there was a younger woman or something like that. I just thought he met someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. dumped your mom and did the thing. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. So there was infidelity and then... And then um, and it had been covered up in my family. It was like this secret. And then yeah. one day my brother let it slip and I was in my twenties and I just, somebody, my brother had said, he's old. What are you going to do? You're going to make him feel terrible. Yes. And that's what my therapist said. He said, he's going to be around a long time and this is going to, this, this will poison the relationship. You have to confront you him. You drank the poison. You're waiting him for, to fall over. Yeah. Because right. you have the grudge. Resentment. Yeah. Yes. So it took me 10 years to bring it up with him and and I brought it up with him and he he said he was sorry and he apologized and and I I know it sounds so simple but it was sincere and and he said something to the effect of I can't imagine what it's like for you who looked up to me because I did and thought I was the greatest thing in the world to then find that out about me I can't imagine and he just apologized and and um uh, and listen, I didn't skip off that day, but my relationship with him was was much better from that from that moment on. What else could you ask from a man? Right, exactly. But the uh, other side of that is my brother saying, "Don't bring it up with him," and and well, it's a long time ago, and all these things. So so that's the so, so it just. I, but it took me ten years to bring it up because I was so torn about hurting course. this guy. But, but in the meantime, to... every time I talked to him for those 10 years, we were having a conversation about the Red Sox, the Patriots, and on the tip of my tongue, right. if you could read my tongue, it's like, how could you cheat on Ma? How could you walk out on us? This but I like, never said it. This is like a scene from a movie. Well, isn't that, the, isn't that what you do when you're a good actor? Yeah, you're saying certain things, but underneath is... Yeah. Yeah. So he says he's sorry, completely sincere. Yeah. And I can't imagine what you went through, Gary. I'm sorry. Yeah. So then what is the current resentment? Oh, it's it's uh it's uh residual and and nowhere near what it what it once was. So it's you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's you working on you. And believe me, I I'm giving you And here's lo- the other thing. The man has a lot of a lot of faults and a lot of faults that I see in my in myself. He's a, he's uh uh very um he flies off the handle in, in temper tantrums. Carries Jay Moore across the stage, smashes right, him right. against the wall, then yeah. says, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've been, people have asked me over the years, hey, did you punch out Jay Moore? <laughs> God, no. I, no. No, I didn't punch him out. No. He just but carried you know how me stories and go. And, yeah, yeah. And, but here's the other thing. When we were on that show, we used to wrestle sometimes, and I can remember uh, picking you up in a much more playful manner. Yeah. Because, by the way, at that point, I was, I'm still pretty strong, but I was also much younger. So I was strong, and I could, and I could lift you up, and, and, uh, and it was funny. But yeah. then that day, and I think that was the other thing I saw in your face. You were like, is he fucking around? I thought you were kidding me. Yes. Until I hit the yes. wall yes. and knocked over the set. Well, here's the thing I with thought sets, you were kidding the whole way. It looks way. like I'm killing you because the set is not very stable. And, and so it You shakes. were trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> when you pick someone up and run across the stage with them... In it's flip-flops. Not, huh? I was wearing flip-flops at the I'm time. Like, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, but you're a fucking big guy. No, I know. But 6'4", 235? 6'6", 225. 225. About 8% yeah. body fat? No, no, much more Beautiful. than Beautiful. 7% tops. <laughs> How tall are you? 6'6". Six, six. I feel like <laughs> Alan Ladd on Easter Island. <laughs> Best in the show. It's like the fifth podcast I've said oh. that. 
So with your dad, and we'll move on, and we'll try to get some laughs and salvage this because Gary has just uh, – we're making a lot of headway here. <laughs> I feel like we had a real breakthrough today. What – in your perfect world, what do you want to have? What do you want your father to do? He's apologized to you. No, no, no. I I realize that it's just what, what I was talking about is just the the faults. And so when I go to I go to visit him, he's in a VA hospital. Oh my he, god! He, yeah, he had diabetes. He lost a put the baggage down of his hug him. Jesus, come no, on! I, I I have we have wonderful sessions, but when I go there, it's. And he, and also his his mind isn't isn't very sharp anymore. So when I go there, it's like two hours of stories of him getting in fights in the Bronx and boxing in the Navy and things like that. And at no point is he like, "How's your, my age? How's your comedy going? What was I it like being on this? How was that going?" So that's it's not just, the resent. I know what the resentment is, and that's not what it is. Then tell me what it is. He's I'm leaving you terrified again. Terrified of divorce. Oh wow! And things like that. And, and he's in a room. That's the thing. He to had this prepare kid to leave late in life, and, and now he's going to leave. And, and when he's you been go out, there, he checked out a long time ago. As far as is this Paul mentally? Yeah, but he's about. But he's not. And also, he's abdicated his throne, and that he doesn't run the family anymore. Once you leave the house, so my brothers don't take him seriously. He set up a little separate kingdom off to the side. That he yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah. satellite kingdom. Yeah. It's like the Falkland Islands. <laughs> and your mom's left with England, like, but it's this bizarre half a throne. Yeah. But your father leaving Earth years from now, of course, God willing. Yeah. That's the resentment. And that's something you can never say to someone, don't die, asshole. Yeah. Don't have had me so late. Yeah. Because my brothers are much older. They got... To have, like, it, like my father's, if I make him a grandfather, he's not really the, he's not, my kids are never going to know my father because they're never going to know the father that I, that I, you know what I mean. They're going to get this, this, uh, imitation of my father that's, uh, not as with it and is missing, uh, his right leg and is so, like Johnny most. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh my god, I only got one leg and Bird got stabbed under the boards and no one called it the referee, the drunk. <laughs> they were obviously at Father's 2 on Beacon Street before the garden <laughs> game. Why, was that Pharrell or Johnny Most? Why not have children when you can't? I'm not, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, out, go out there tonight and knock somebody. Why not have children, and this is an almost, it's a Herculean task mentally but you have so much as you should because he's your father vested in you you know uh respect thy mother and father yeah. like carlin said in his 10 commandments respect is earned and your father earned as much respect you guys hit the ceiling with i'm sorry yeah and i can't believe it yeah and that's all he could say to you yeah and now he's at the va hospital yeah and you, you can't think about kids as it relates to your father. You're selling you short because you're so fantastic that you, I see you in my home, the ease in which you walk in, you take off your shoes. I hand you my kid. You don't set him down. You're not awkward. I go take a leak. I come back. You're in the playroom. You're laying on the floor. My wife's laying on the floor next to you and you're passing this baby back and forth. You're playing toy like this is greater than you, this ability to love and embrace. OK, you with me so far? Yeah. So why not think about children as an opportunity to reset the rails that your father went off and have children? And as we stated earlier, give them Every fucking thing you got in honor of your father and in honor of the sadness he must live with, live with every day, knowing that two out of his three guys had a full time dad. And the reason I'm guessing he doesn't ask you about how your stand up is, is because it kills him that he can't just get up out of a VA hospital I'm getting fucking choked up talking about your dad <laughs> and go see you because in a, that's, you've succeeded his wildest dreams for you. 
You were a baby. You couldn't feed yourself. You learned to walk and talk, and they had to give you fucking baby food, and you went, blah, blah, goo, and they go, that sounded like he said something, right, Barbara? <laughs> and then now, you call the Comedy Cellar, the greatest comedy club in the world, and they go, yeah, we got you. You're all set. And you're not a guy that ever tanks it. You kill it. You're kind. You're ha- like, what do you want your kids to be? Handsome, kind, kind, first and foremost. Yeah. You want your children to be kind. And you want and to instill in them some sense of fairness, some sense of right and wrong. And I'm going to go through this life with light instead of the darkness. In his absence, your mother superseded her ability to give half and she gave 90% of it. Yeah. And you're the walking embodiment of the incredible woman he left. He can't go see you do comedy. He can't even ask you about it. It's too heartbreaking. But don't you think that knowing what I'm trying to avoid, which is to see, because I grew up very depressed and, and I haven't had an episode in a while, but there were times when I couldn't leave my you know, apartment for days. And we, we I mean, we, you know, the fetal position and that yes. whole thing, every Revolt, comedian, yeah. every comedian has been there. So this the right. idea, this up in pocket right here. Right. Yeah. I'm on everything but roller skates, but I, right. oh, anyway, gang, the, uh, down on the television, <laughs> the pressure that I feel when I think about having kids, it's, it's this, don't fuck this kid up. And even the most together parents feel that don't, Chris Rock At talks first. about it. Don't fuck this kid up. Don't give him uh, uh, keep her up the pole. Self, right? The self esteem that you have to instill in a kid. Like I always felt. You don't ins- you don't why do we become self-esteem. why do we become comedians? They weren't having. We didn't get attention. Maybe it's also how you sometimes. I don't want to make another comedian. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes <laughs> Gary, it's just the way your fucking hard drive is installed. No one's bipolar because their fucking parents were weird. You just got born. I, I was born an alcoholic with panic attacks. You were born depressed. No, my father's mother was a was a uh, manic oh, depressive. Oh, I could go through the right? family tree. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. I could find yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. food allergy that I'm right. sure I'm going to yeah, get yeah, one yeah. day too. All right. But really what you're explaining to me is a life of fear yeah. and a life of hesitancy. Absolutely. A reticent life based on a things. A diffident Yes, and other synonyms. Yes. Life based <laughs> entirely on things that happen when you were in diapers. Let yourself off the hook. You were a baby. You didn't do any of this. You were a passenger. You were a not, you were an observer and you were thrust into this play that your brothers never had to play this part in this play. Your brothers had a different movie they were in. I say to me and my sisters all the time, my mom got sober when I was eight. Me and my two sisters have three completely different sets of parents. Do you feel like an only child? No. Oh, see, because I feel like my an only sister child. Virginia set up a wall in front of Julie and Julie set up a wall in front of me. Like they were the defense. Like, all right, you can call me, you can call me names. Yeah. You can hit me with a wooden spoon. You can maybe get past me to Julie, but you're not touching that fucking baby. Wow. That's how I was raised. And that's why <laughs> my sisters... I was raised like a pledge at Delta House. <laughs> <laughs> why flounder? <laughs> yes. Why not? Maybe I was... In... <laughs> I thought you were going to answer it. <laughs> I just gave you a batting practice basketball. Uh, flounder. <laughs> but it's like not even a bad name. No. It's just a regular like Pinto. You in that script you could have went Pinto. <laughs> Why Pin? Why not? Yeah, it's also my favorite scene in in um one of my favorite scenes in Reservoir Dogs is when they go over the names. Mister Pink sounds like Mister Pussy. Why do I have to be Mister Pink? Because somebody else on some other. Because you're a fucking <laughs> fag, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you, Mr. Brown. That sounds like sh- I'm Mr. Brown. It sounds like shit. <laughs> what the fuck difference does a name make? What name you are? Is that Colin Quinn? Is Harvey Keitel? Yeah. Well, you what, have a cool what? name. All right. So what? I'm Mr. White. It's the best. It's all right. Obviously, it's the best name going. You know. <laughs> we do a bank job. I'm the guy in the white hat. I'm Mr. White. 
but don't call me a fucking rat. Who's going to be okay? Say the goddamn words, you know? <laughs> you have to let yourself off the hook, and you have to, and not right away, because that would be impossible and stupid of me to ask of you, but you're someone I love. And if I can... Why? Because you, you... Look at... Look what we're doing. I've for long... I just now re-realized that this is being recorded.